Welcome to The Bow Dudes, a podcast about archery and the lives it has ruined. The Bow Dudes are not responsible for diminishing archery skills or lower IQ. I worry about breathing. Shut up, Jude. And I'm totally lost. God, I keep having to remember that we're PG-13. No, he did not. (laughs) I'm so glad you have yourself to crack up. Logic and common sense will not be tolerated. This is a very interesting podcast so far. We are back. Can everybody hear me? Yep. All right, good. That's a good way to start. Should have checked this beforehand. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? No. Okay. <laughs> That's good to know. All right, well, we're missing Jack tonight. He's on a hiatus or whatever you want to call it. You guys can make up your own names for it in a little bit. <coughs> I know. <laughs> Shutting up now. <laughs> That's a good way to start all the time. Anyway, uh, and another, Thunder's, where, gone where, Thunder, Thunder's gone. He's shooting a league or something. Where is old P-Dub tonight? Uh, I think Josiah. Has, oh, he said that out loud. Josiah has a music, <laughs> and he knew who he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Josiah has a music choir thing or something. And Debbie was working. So. Christmas program? No, I don't think it's a Christmas. Here we program. come, a wassailing. <laughs> you can go however you want to. <laughs> anyway, we might an eye out. We're gonna pause. Thing. Yeah, we are gonna start like we always do, and we're gonna find out what everybody did in archery this week. And Pib's got some issues. He'll get to those in a few minutes. He's mad. <laughs> so mad I could brush my teeth with a chainsaw. <laughs> Feel sorry for the chainsaw trying to clean that tooth. <laughs> What'd you do this week, Bob? One. Oh <laughs> uh, well, this past week I did go. I did go bow hunting Saturday, Sunday evening. For a while, man, it was beautiful out in the timber. Nice and quiet and peaceful. You didn't have to worry about getting. Woke up by any deer or anything. And, uh, <laughs> it was it had rained a little bit, so it was pretty quiet. I'd, quiet getting in and out. Yeah, yeah. Did see see one little buck. He came by at about thirty yards and fed through the timber. Uh, other than that, I did uh, shot a little practice with Vinny and Jules uh, indoor. <clears throat> shot uh, Independence Bow Hunters had a tournament on Sunday. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Yep. Saturday. I went. So you're and, uh, Bob Saturday. Shot it. Yeah. <laughs> Tournament on Saturday, hunting on Sunday. <clears throat> I'd have shown up. I'd have known they were doing that. Would you? Yeah. At least come in and say hi. I mm-hmm. didn't even know they were having anything. Hmm. No yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. I just got his finger on the pulse of the archery I, community. I should yeah. follow archery tell. more often. <laughs> Well, I asked Jack, oh, you know about this? He goes, nope, not a clue. <laughs> I, said, I think we get in the woods too much. <laughs> well, you're still on Facebook. Jack's not. But I think it was yeah, on Facebook, too. So It was. I, That's I, how I knew about it. Uh, what, what was it under, though? Independence Bow Hunters? Yeah. yeah. I should probably follow them on Facebook. You think? <laughs> well, I follow Forbes. You think he would have said something about it? He is the president. Had, CEO and Toby does everything else. They had 27 shooters there. That was 28, I thought. 28, yeah. 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 28, it was a pretty good crowd. So. 28, I even showed up, and that's about it. 28 to bystander if I'd have known about it. He's not only the president, he's also a member. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he joins the hair club for men, he'll just take that over, too. Pip walked in with his brand-new boots on. He was ready to get you got new That boots. was a mistake. <laughs> you got new boots? <laughs> yes, I do. I wondered if it was. <laughs> it was a mistake. Did you get the light blue snake skin that we were talking about? No. With the matching belt? No. We'd call you Peep. No, <laughs> not so much. All right, they, they, they did have a pretty profound hook on them. <laughs> <laughs> they were red with the hook in the front, weren't they? It's yep. Senor Peep. Senor Peep. Gary, <laughs> you asshole. I know it. I've been called worse today, and I didn't even go to work. What have you been doing, Benny? Pretty much the same thing Bob has. He's been shooting. <laughs> that was that was informative. <laughs> yeah. well, Sorry, I should have done more. I, <laughs> He's Bob's doing it up for you and Benny both. I went to Independence, and as bad as you can possibly imagine, 
it could go, it went worse. Awesome. I don't want to hear it. It, it was it was crap. From I don't want to hear it. <laughs> was it the lighting? It was the dumbass pulling the bow back. Is what it was. I didn't think the lighting was bad in there. I didn't either. I just made I just, that up. <laughs> just completely made it up. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was a nice range. First time I'd ever been. Yeah, first I'd, time I'd ever been there. I liked it. Really? I thought you'd been there. No. Nope. I've been there a couple times, but it's it a short roof. It seems kind of weird, but actually, my first on the line this year, and it was awful. So Mine too. Sunday was a lot better at Overton's, but yeah. If I could have shot my whole game like I shot the middle, <laughs> man, I'd have been. If I could have shot been, my whole game like I did the first three ends, whoo. My practice ends was good too. I'm, yep. think, I'm thinking if they'd let me and Bob piece our scorecards together, we'd still be. Last. We could get second. <laughs> piece our scorecards together, work our way up to 17. We might make the shoot off. <laughs> I went to a tournament Saturday night there, and archery happened. <laughs> Did you arch? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now you're back. You go. Oh, not oh. that one. I mean, I actually participate in archery. Uh, yes. Okay. How'd you do? Uh, not so much. So you didn't arch very well. No, 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 I did not. How did Thunder arch? He's not here to tell he us. He actually arched pretty well. He he got stronger yeah. as it went along. I was yes, shooting right right beside him and he, he kinda he was sucking right along with me at the beginning and then he <laughs> he all of a sudden remembered how to shoot his bow. His mental game was better. And then uh, believe it or not, he, he said a funny while we was Really? Oh yeah. come on. We we were both <laughs> drawn back at and our releases broke at the same time, and of course arrows hit down there just twenty yards. But and I mean, just right out of the blue, he says, "I won." <laughs> <laughs> you know, in other words, his arrow got there first, I guess. But I said, "Turn around!" I almost had to check his teeth and everything else, make sure it was the same same guy on the line. I mean, yeah. Hey, the funniest thing that ever happened to me <laughs> on an indoor tournament, I was shooting beside a guy who was shooting like an old Bowtech. It wasn't a constitution. Yeah, it might have been a constitution. Big, long, black. And he had a Darth Vader action figure chicken banded to the riser. Of, <laughs> you know, and I shot beside him for, you know, we was about the fourth or fifth end. And he shot and dropped his head and says, force wasn't with that one. And I'll, I was at full draw. And it was somebody almost got shot because I almost throwed it out through there that's when you just launch went to the ceiling and oh go, my I had God. a good reason I had a good reason <laughs> it was I had it was great I've, I've been through anything and everything that could happen on the line I was shooting my first state tournament and the first day they just throw everybody together you know so I had some they were shooting 20 yards but they were just kids and I had this kid up there and he had a had a pin sight on a had dovetail and he was left handed so he was facing me and next thing you know he, he shoots and, and brings his bow down hits it on his leg and his sight comes off and I'm at full draw I was shooting fingers and I'm, I'm at full draw and I feel something hit me on the foot and I glance down and his sight's <laughs> between my feet he puts his bow down gets down on his hands and knees and starts crawling around <laughs> under him, gets, then when we get to the last one he says Looks at me, and we're down at Jeff City. He says, you know where there's any good video game places to go play? Look at him. <laughs> Do I look like I play video games? <laughs> you know? uh, then I had then at the KC shootout one time, I was shooting fingers again and had a, a <laughs> guy with a longbow shooting traditional right in front of me. And he beat me to death with his bow. I mean, <laughs> but he'd, he'd shoot all, all five of his arrows in about a minute. So I would. I got to where one time I was draw. I was all back, and I hear something kind of click, and I looked down, and the the tip of his bow was sticking in my cam. If I would have turned, oh, that would have been, been dynamic. Oh, that would have been ugly. So I just waited. I just let him. I just stand there and wait. He'd shoot all five of his arrows. <laughs> boom, he's gone. And then I'd shoot mine. And I shot kind of fast anyway. But. I know you've got a video <laughs> game trophy at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ain't seeing that. Uh-huh. Bob yeah. Brown, Pong champion, 1978. <laughs> At least it's not 76. Yeah. <laughs> 76. At least it's not 78. Would, 78 would have been defender. No, that's right. Yeah. Jack's going for board game. Board game master or yeah. whatever you want to call it. 
It, it, it was he's, funny that he says Paul He's got a definite Dungeons and Dragons look about him. He does. Then you D- throw in that red, D- you throw in that redheaded kid of his. There's no telling what might happen. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a kid lose all his money down at uh, Columbia. We were at FFA convention and uh, at the hotel we were staying in. They had a pong machine out, out there, and he had one at home, so he was good. Was it real money or Confederate? No, it was real. <laughs> it was real gone when he lost it. This kid come out. This guy come out of the bar, of course, stumbling and stuff, and. How you play this game? I said, "Oh no, this isn't good, Jim. Let's go." <laughs> you no, know, oh, no, no. Yeah. That, afterwards, Jim, after he lost all his money, he said, "Boy, that guy got good in a hurry." <laughs> so, <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> you know, he was sandbagging. Write, write this down in a freaking book. And put it, <laughs> paste it on your forehead. You know. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, well, I don't know how it got You should have taught him how to play <laughs> poker. It's been. Yeah. yeah. He was out of money by then. Yeah. But, uh, it's hard to have a poker face when you're broke. <laughs> so what would you do, Gary? I went bow hunting a couple times and no luck whatsoever. Nothing. It didn't it's even something. see deer. I, think I got in really late one day, but it was before it was supposed to rain the other night, and I figured that low pressure coming in there might be something moving, but nothing. Hmm. I'm sitting kind of in between two bean fields, but – Nothing. I mean, <clears throat> squirrel. I got a squirrel down there that's Boone and Crockett. Hey. Oh, he's, a, a, he's an easy booner. He's an 18-pounder. <laughs> and I saw a beaver. And I did not have a 100-yard pin. Or I'd have Shutting up now. <laughs> <laughs> a real live one with a fat tail. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Add that's on. that's add my on, favorite kind. <laughs> I was going to say, go ahead and add on. I can, on say, I can say something, but Jules don't listen to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to. I tried to text her. <laughs> I got you know, I was talking to her the other day. I said something about, you know, no, we you weren't. You were listening to her great. <laughs> no, she, we, were, we were walking back from pulling arrows. I said something to her about the podcast. She goes, well, I don't listen to you guys. I said, fine, I'm going to quit listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's funny because I've got this camera up, and she, uh, Jules, went up to the farm and hunted out of the box stand, and uh, and the camera happens to be facing towards that box, so only it's probably eighty hundred yards away. And uh, first day, she didn't see the camera. Of course, she had to use the bathroom out in front of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> Second day, she's sitting there, and she's looking around. She looks down, and she says, oh, well, no, there's a camera. She said, how far was that? So I pulled the car, and I told her <laughs> the other day that that I I had uh, pulled the cards on the camera and, uh, and uh, to please – Keep an eye on Facebook. <laughs> so, <laughs> For about three minutes, I lost my blind. <laughs> there was something I did. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Oh, that's uh, good. That's good. Yeah. Did it, you pee in her boot? Oh, my. <laughs> I almost did just now. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, so now we can't say fat tail beaver anymore. We know that. Because <laughs> that gets us off track. <sighs> But, but you guys went. You guys went and shot uh, Pib and Vinny. You all shot Sunday. If that's what you want to call it. Yeah, went to Overton's in Lawrence, Kansas. Was it better it's on a nice Sunday? Place. Or? No. Yes. No. No, it was not. <laughs> so what do you do different? Really? It's better. I don't know. Really just, don't. Just I felt it. I really don't. <laughs> he didn't start drinking. He waited till later. So Pib, what? What changes have you made since None weekend? Oh don't give me that you've I had, have not You've had two days to tear your bow down completely click. And start nope. over Click Nope No was click you, Was you shooting V-bars Yeah Both days I I didn't pay that much attention Were you using a new release Yes Do you want your old one back No Okay good It's got on the shelf I'm gonna <laughs> You asshole <laughs> But here's the thing: you don't really know where it's at. Uh, you know, you said it, you never it doesn't wanted matter it back, because so there was three of us. It doesn't matter because I'd have done the Bob same West. thing with it that I did with this one. You probably would have. You suck it into archery anyway. Yeah, you're a 3D hunter guy. Okay. Well, <laughs> I came this close to to almost swapping a release me. around to, to almost had him convinced just because of our last podcast. You know, listening to it and stuff. And right. But I didn't. I 
but tell me why I can shoot a hinge and be shooting along and then throw it in in my pocket and pull out that heavy metal thumb and for three to six shots that thing goes off just Beautiful. Like that. and it's in the center and everything holds steady and it's just boom 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 but then all of a sudden it won't go off i can't get it to go off if it's not going you're not doing nothing it's all in your head bob but i load it the same i get everything and i'm i feel like i'm pulling the same everything's steady but the thing won't go off. But like I said, I, I can put it back up, shoot my hinge probably 10, 15 times. I think that hinge is making you pull through it. And mm-hmm. when you pick up the button and you get tentative at some point in the shot, and you're just not finishing your shot. I mean, I've got that heavy metal set pretty pretty heavy, I mean, actually. so I could tell you, Bob. The reason it doesn't go the same each time is because, like all of us, we're setting up slightly different each time. That's why. Got the official word from Thunder. What textbook did you get that out of? Thunder 101. Oh. This thing, this thing set. <laughs> like I said, it just, I think kind of what Pip said, I, when, I, when I'm shooting a hinge and pulling through it, it when I get, when I, I just go ahead and pull through that and then after a while i pull back and i just sit there and watch it or something right but I, then the, I, when i make it go off then it gets ugly you know i i made the, the other night or the last podcast we talked about i was going to stick with this release and and whatever and I, I was shooting pretty decent here at home and saturday night was the first time i've actually stood on a line to shoot and uh man the first two or three ends were just beautiful and I relaxed and thought, ah, this is going to be great. And I was getting a really good sight picture and, you know, everything. Go. I shoot that true spot type mm-hmm. lens. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm aware of movement with it because you can see around the edges and, and whatever. But I stare at the X and. <clears throat> that bow was sitting really good and so good that I was like, you got to go. You got to go now. Mm-hmm. And gank out in the, in the eight, in the mater, it went. Well, that, that one happened and then I got mad and, and thought, okay, no. this will, this will probably go in the middle in the, in the mater again. So third shot, right, right dead in the X. I got this. I got it. And then, and you know, it's just not enough time with it that it's, and I've had so many years of getting away with a marginal shot with that other one. This release isn't letting me do it, and which is, a in, a in the long run, that's a good thing. But, man, I sure embarrassed myself Saturday night and Sunday. What I've found is those brass releases, they got a lot of heft. When you throw them, you can really get good distance out of it. Can you? Yes. I imagine they have some pretty good energy when they hit yeah, them, they, too. Yeah, they, they dent pretty good. <clears throat> so, I was close. <laughs> you have to use a larger bobber, though, if you're using them when you're fishing. Because they're heavy and they pull the pull the small ones down. What's fishing? Never mind. <laughs> city boy right there, Bob. He's a city hunter. He's losing it all. But uh, is what you t- <laughs> that was my weekend of shooting. It was ugly, and I came home even more determined than I was. Fish is when you drop your phone in the stool, and then you have to go <laughs> reach down in it and fish for it. We won't talk about that. <laughs> you better be fishing for some new boots here. I got some new boots. I'm hot just, damn, what are you talking about, Bob? Why are you yeah, wearing hot them? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different night. Oh, that's fun. I'm going upstairs. <laughs> Don't make us break out the apple beam again. No. <laughs> Still have nightmares about that one, don't you? Yes. He took off upstairs like his ass was on fireball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, think Jack's even clear. Th- you know, Gary, I'm really trying, really, tr- I'm really trying hard not to make th- this 
have to be edited. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. We love you, Pib. I'm really trying, no. and I'm trying really hard for it to be. <laughs> he, he loves you like wards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so anyway, let's get into our topic. Ooh, with a friend like Vince, I don't need an enema. No kidding. <laughs> enema. <laughs> You're already getting five dimes. <laughs> One little package of dimes. So, should we have a commercial break before we go back to... Oh, we don't do commercial. We have a commercial? No, I was going to make something up. We don't have anybody to... Hair Club for Men. Watch it. (laughs) I'm sorry. Hair cream, a little dabble, do you? (laughs) Hair's overrated. Just for men. That's what I'm thinking would be perfect for us. What's that? Just for men. You need Vagisil, which is your grape. Boxes and boxes and boxes. Anyway, let's just move on. Now I am a little feeling a little sandy. You get that not so fresh feeling? I do. Okay. Uh, I'm all so right. glad we have these things because, man, I was in a bad mood all day today. How come? And, and now I'm work, but now I'm in a pretty good mood. You now. got a grin on you now? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's way better. Hey, Jack's wanting to know how the, how the podcast is going. Tell him he should be here. No. If he, t- tell him if he wants to know how the podcast's going, that oh, we're wait, sitting wait. right here. Hang on. i got to amend that statement. He wanted to know if we got the card figured out. Huh? Oh, okay. No. Tell him no. Tell him no. no. We're, we're just talking. We're just winging it. <laughs> just talking, waiting for you to call. Yeah. Tell him we got a good editor. None ya. Say we called Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Well, we did. Okay. Well, our topic tonight, it's kind of, it's going to be basically just our opinion like always, but uh, we were discussing the other day, if you can actually overtrain, if you can just shoot to the point where you either completely everything is in your subconscious and you just standing up there shooting arrows, or if you actually do have to train and keep training yourself all the time. Don't know, never Tor- reached that Tornado point. just went through here. <laughs> my, my problem is having the time or making the time to set up the right training regimen, I guess, is what it would be. Uh, I mean, I go shoot when I can. can and, uh, you know, I've heard people talk about, you know, shooting four, five, six games a day, you know, stuff. Well, those people have – more time to do that than I've got. Yeah. Don't don't leave the house at four o'clock in the morning and get home at six. Yeah, we know the feeling, don't we? Vinny? Yeah, especially winter time. I mean, you know, summertime yeah. you can get home and kind of go out, and still have time and shoot some some arrows. But I don't know. To me, it's more of a quality arrow type of thing than it is quantity. I guess but is what training with the purpose. Then, yeah, I mean, try to figure something out. I mean, sometimes my problem is what what I think I've got figured out today <laughs> and work on tomorrow may not work. So well, that's the, same, the truth. Uh, what, so you don't do the same thing every time you decide you're going to practice. Most of the time, um, I just go ahead and if I'm going to work on something, you know, it'll be down in the basement at ten, ten or eleven yards, and try to work on just you know, some form or something like that. Most of the time, if we go on up to the club, you know, my practice will be actually shooting a game, you know. And uh, you should, how is it they always say, what's that old thing they always talk about? Uh, you should uh, shoot a tournament like you practice and practice like you're shooting a tournament or something like that. Yeah. So We had a coach that always told us, <clears throat> practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Yeah. That made sense, actually. <laughs> Hated the guy with the passion, but that made sense. If you practice it wrong every time, you'll do it wrong every time. But, but yeah, it. Uh, I don't know. What about you, Vince? <laughs> <laughs> if I had a cricket noise, I'd play I it. Got, I got nothing. <laughs> you got, <laughs> well, you're always practicing. You're practicing to be me- mediocre. Remember? I am. I'm damn good at it. Now you added <laughs> you added some weight to your bow the other night. I did. <laughs> That I was help. Say to your boots. I, I, did, I did that too. <laughs> Hashtag nobody. It, did it help? At, it looked like it did at the time. It did. <clears throat> the, will it help tomorrow? I don't know. Hey, let let it like, just seems to. Well, think about that for a second. You said it helped at the time, but will it help later? 
Did it help at the time just because you focused on it more? Focused on That's your shot. Three day more? rule. Yeah. Well, I, Anything I, I, different I, you do to your bow, any new piece you buy or, or whatever, new accessory, it, lasts, it's, it makes you better for three days. Then you're back to where you were. Okay. I'm, I'm, st- know. I'm still tinkering and <laughs> trying to get my dot to sit this like I wanted to, react like I wanted to. Six o'clock or dead center? I got I to gotta do dead center. I can't. Me and Bob both do. Well, you do center, don't you? I'm well, more of a six o'clock. I've kind of, I, I've got this expression that I, I spent money on, put new strings on, getting it tuned and everything else. And so I decided it's 50 pound limb, so it's Hashtag nice. Hashtag Doug Hutchinson. Yeah. So it's nice and easy <laughs> to, to shoot. And so the, the other night I decided I'm going to shoot the damn thing. You know, I'm going to give it a chance. I'm gonna, so I took it to the, to the club every Monday night and. Started shooting, and I'm shooting a big black dot that, that should cover the whole white. But I don't know. For some reason in my head, covering the whole white just didn't work. Because you want to see what you're shooting at. Yeah. But if I dropped it down and saw like a like a half, not even a, like a quarter moon yep. above that thing, and it would be kind of the same thing as shooting a not quite six o'clock, but yeah. right. Anyway, I, when I was seeing a, the the half moon white or yellow above that thing, man, it was sitting there and it was it was banging in there. I didn't want didn't say anything, but it was, sounds like you need a smaller dot. Good. Well, then I then I worry about holding the center again because when I shot the other night, I was shooting the blue light, and, right? And it was just once I got you know if I focused on if I got a hole started in the center. My top, my top dot on that Vegas. I had a big old chunk out of the center, and I just look at that thing, and boom, she'd go off and was in there. Have you tried a clarifier? <coughs> fuzz, no. your, fuzz your dot out a little bit, where you can kind of look past. You can see it, but you my can't dot's really see pretty it. Pretty fuzzy most of the time, anyway. So uh, <laughs> he likes to trick. It just makes it not as distinct in your vision yeah. to me. Hmm. And Is I that can, what you do? I can kind of look past it. Hmm. I'm thinking about doing like uh, making a. I've got this this one scope that I think it's a six power or whatever. And, I got to try that. And it's uh, it's got a Jules put a a ring binder. You know what I'm talking about? Well, it's not yeah, yeah. Really a ring binder, but the little little ring yeah, that yeah. you put on your paper, put it in a notebook. She put that on her lens and blacked it out, so it's basically made a true spotlight thing. Only the and she seems to really like it, so I'm going to try it and just. <clears throat> Trying around, trying different things. She's becoming a real pain in the ass. She's shooting becoming. pretty well. But <laughs> really, <laughs> I said all I'm going to say. Bat beaver tail. But, <laughs> I didn't say that. Vince but, did. Uh, yeah, I did not. Did you? Now, did. When I shot, when I was shooting league, I always had the just a circle that would fit right around the five spots. So the middle of it was right open. And, it didn't matter what I shot. It didn't help. That's a true spot. Yeah, well, it was truly off on my bow. <laughs> Actually, it's probably right Still on the bow. It was off my head. No, that's when I sold. Just oh. checking. But it's gone. Well, I, I sold it. I shipped it to a guy in South Africa in August, and he sent me an email yesterday. said he hadn't got it yet. We've both contacted eBay and PayPal and everybody to get them to send him his money back. I'm still out the scope, but it says it was returned to sender. I haven't got it back yet either. Huh. So I told him, if I get it back, I'll send it to you. Lower I, 48, buddy. I got your money. I'll send it to you. Well, you know, who would have thought? I took it to the USPS, and they said, oh, yeah, we'll have it there in about six days. Okay. Four months later, he still hasn't got it. Mm. So. Wow. He's been really cool about it, though. I mean, he's like, I understand it's not your fault because I sent him all the tracking numbers and everything. And everything says it's been returned to me, and I haven't seen it yet. So he knows I sent it. eBay knows I sent it. PayPal knows I sent it. But they even closed his case on eBay. They just closed the case, and he responded to him. He's like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, well, I'll send you half your money back. but Just, I, just I mean, leave it over there on the shelf when you leave, Gary. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he paid $202, <laughs> in case you're wondering. No. <laughs> we are joking about that, but he never received it, and I didn't get it back. So. That's not how we do business unless you're pib. But hey, what, hey, what, hey, 
What do you what do you like to, what do you think about the overtraining thing? Um I don't I don't mean it's bad, but you I mean you've got a good setup down here, so you get to practice a lot. I, I Barb shoot, shoots and she understands so I shoot do you every think you every shoot, day if I can. Do you think a lot of times it can be overdone? Oh, I've overdone it in a day. There have been days I'll sit no, down no, here and not, shoot for eight like, hours. Not like that. I mean just but <sighs> Do you practice, like, okay, let's go to 3D. Now, do you practice shooting pretty much every day right up until tournament time, or do you take a day or two off before? Or? Um, I don't take any time off. I'm, I'm shooting at 40. I'm shooting groups at 40 up until tournament day. And then when I get there, I check my bow at 40, make sure it's good, and... Why why you do it just at forty? That's my Pretty average. Close. Yeah. Gotcha. So I wanna know that you know, five out of six are in the twelve at forty. So yeah. that that's five my, out of six, you're not training enough. I have to take time out, put my bow up and middle well, that's, middle health weeks. That's <laughs> that's so you'll keep from breaking it. Yeah. No. He has to find his release because he's through it. <laughs> it's a, probably a good thing you don't live by a pond, isn't it? Not within throwing distance anyway, but there's a big field where you lose dogs and everything. You got a lagoon there. out there, I think. I do. Ooh. I can find Ew. I can find I can find a pond. <laughs> uh wouldn't you love to metal detect in his yard? There's um, no telling what you'd find. Wedding, wedding rings. <laughs> Got mad at her four days in a row. <coughs> 92. Yep, where, where were we? Where did we go that year? Was it Coleman? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I've never seen the likes of it, dude. It, me and Vinny, we, we get along great. Must have. And uh, he was not having a good day. On the practice range when we I got was, there. I was supposed to take some medicine with me that I left in Missouri. And it not good without it. I was an ass. <laughs> Straight up ass. I turned around to Julie. I said, you live with that? <laughs> I just walked off and said, I love so, you, Vince, but I can't take yeah. it. I'm out. <laughs> what, what's the excuse when you actually have the medicine and you're in Missouri? Sometimes I just suck. <laughs> You've been working with him, Bob. But I'm it, impressed. The first step is admitting it. <laughs> and then what was that, that? That one day that was so funny. That day, edit. first step is admitting you have a problem. That day we were shooting Marshall no edits. Yeah, oh, oh, right. <laughs> I couldn't get nothing to go right. We told him you need to go check your bow, Vince. You, I, saw, I think something's wrong with your bow. You need to go check it. And we knew nothing was wrong with his bow. We were just like Bob was shooting so good. I was like, he's got to go because. Vince is going to mess you up. <laughs> <laughs> but then he went to the practice bells, come back, and started lighting it up. So yeah, he did. I think that was a fun day. Yeah, it was. It was pretty good. It didn't start out good, but it ended up good. Then we went back, and you really lit it up when we went back to make the makeup ones. Yeah, I did all right. So it's just some days. A lot of times, it's just confidence. I mean, yeah. I tend much. to try too hard. Yep. I think that's a lot of it right there. Instead of just but shooting your bow. <laughs> Shut up and shoot. Where's the challenge in that? <laughs> what fun is it if you can't overthink it? I mean, honestly. I don't know. Let's ask Thunder that. No. I've got the response already. I'll find one in there somewhere. <laughs> so Bob and Vinny shoot traditional a lot of times. We can go with a lot of times. Bob and Vinny hardly ever shoot traditional. Occasionally. <laughs> Occasionally they shoot traditional. Used to a lot. Vinny's good. Never mind. Vinny's not. Vinny's never picked up a traditional bow. Vinny, so I'm going to ask Bob this question. <laughs> Vinny's a far cry from good. No. He's like Robin Hood without the Robin Hood. So uh, what's it like, Bob? Is it a hard transformation going from one to the other? And does it affect your shooting? Well, traditional, it, it's a lot of fun if you like to chase arrows out through the grass and stuff but 
<laughs> so, well, yeah, hey, at least they don't go far. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it it traditional is a lot of fun, but the the thing when you to be really good or for most people is you got to. Sh- that's when you really have to train. You got to shoot. You got to shoot every day. I had to shoot every day and a lot of arrows every day. But the other day we had a club meeting and my boy had a traditional bow there and Vinny picks it up in about 10 yards he stacks all five arrows right into 12 just all <laughs> right together clacking them and stuff and you know so some days are better than others but uh it's a whole different whole different animal uh i do know some guys that when i, I like i said i used to shoot fingers compound but it's it that's still a little different too but there was a lot of guys that that trained with a release uh all week long, and mainly just to help them aim because they they just aim aim aim, and then then they'd switch out and shoot a little bit with their with their fingers to get their their release, you know, so their fingers coming off of the string right. And they said that it helped them, you know, shoot freestyle limited with a compound by helping them aim and stuff. I never I never could I I, I don't like releases in the first place. But uh, I picked up. You got a bunch of them. <laughs> I know it. And I've never really got one that I'm really comfortable with. Uh, I actually, before you all got there the other night, I shot. Uh, I shot this expression with my tab. I can still have it in my pocket, <laughs> and uh, felt really good. Um, but but it, the bow's not really set up right to 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 shoot fingers off of it's yeah. got a drop away on it and if i had a really super good smooth release it it hit in the in the x on the vegas but uh there was more of them that didn't just and that really amplifies when you got a when you got a a, a rest up there on your bow that's not really made for for shooting fingers off of it right uh your release has to be pretty much perfect to, to get it to fly where it needs to. Well, so, but I, I'm not sure I've ever seen anybody that can really shoot really, really super good traditional, put it down, and then grab a compound. Usually the compound they can shoot, in my opinion, but but the... It's pretty much two completely different techniques. Well, you said something a second ago that, <clears throat> that made me think of another question for Vinny is... He said you just walked over and picked up this bow and shot it, and you were just drilling with it, right? Yep. Would, he was. would that would that affect? Like, I mean, we all know you're a little OCD and stuff nope. and, or ADHD. There you go, or ADD or whatever, but whatever you want to call it, whatever the. <clears throat> no, you know what I'm talking about. You do not like to concentrate much. Would that be fair? That would be a good. So is the traditional better then? Because there's really not a lot of aiming and stuff. No. It's it's all. No, that's not right. Tell him, tell him what you told me when when I walked up there after you shot those, and I said, I got the bow. Tell, you remember what you told me? No, I have no idea. This bow shoots right where you look. That's what you told me. It did. And and not all of them knew that for me, but that one did. To the well, same to the same point. I mean, when you're when you're shooting a compound and you. You know, get your pin up there close or whatever, and then forget about it, and then concentrate on where you're shooting uh-huh. and let it go off and do the work. To say basically the same thing when you're when you're when you got your traditional bow and you draw back to me shooting instinctive the right instinctive way, you're just look you're just burning a hole in that spot, and for some reason when that arrow goes off, it's in there. Just like throwing yep. a baseball. Yep, shooting a free throw. But uh, but those guys that shoot traditional and shoot point on at 25 yards or 30 yards I've, or whatever. I've tried that, and I cannot make that work for you, me. you got to judge yardage then. Yep. And shooting a true instinctive, you don't – it's just like just like Vinny said, throwing a baseball, throwing a rock or something like that at, at something. and You don't uh, – the Swinging off- a dead cat. Yeah, the Austrians that when they come over, they 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 shoot traditional all the time longbows. M. R. Hamilton that made my longbow and made them for for a living for a while. Uh, they was always talking about, well, what's your what's your point on distance? 
And I said, I, I don't have one. You know, I just look and and shoot. Now, they shot hundreds of arrows a day. And uh, I, I think in their mind, it was kind of like what they talk about when you just judge your targets, you know, yardage on your targets. You, you burn it in your head what it is. Well, I think... They had stuff burnt in their heads because they shot so much of what their 35 or 40 yards was where their point on was, and they yeah. draw back and put their point on it and yeah. they, let it go. Certain distance it will – I mean, it depends on the bow and the person where at that distance you can just put your point of your arrow yep. on where you want it to hit and let it eat. But it uh, – Traditional takes, and I put it in the grass when I try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> takes a takes a lot of practice. Uh, well, well, did it, did it make sense though? Because I mean, if you don't like to stand there on the line and look through the scope and pay attention and just be focused on one thing, isn't isn't it somewhat easier to shoot? I mean, you get you it's, it's to, more of a fast pace. Would that be better for? Yeah, me and a buddy could go shoot forty target three D course and. An hour, <laughs> you know, if if there's nobody in front of us, we just hour, hour and a half to, you know, just. But there again, you're, you're not. Well, hang on. I think you muted everybody. No. Right. Now you no. did it. Okay. There you go. Now Bob's but back. There again, it's it's not, you're not judging Edit. distance, setting your sight, you know, and, and doing that. You're just walking up there, you know, knocking an arrow. Looking at that. Hey everybody, it's Jack. It was at this point that the recorder stopped working and the guys couldn't figure out how to get it going again. So we're sorry. That's all the podcast there is for this week and we'll see you next week.